Hey everybody, I'm Matt Graham and this is Tyler White from T-Jack Survival and we're going to actually talk about different shelter ideas. Mostly shelters that will contain a fire and keep you warm. Toasty. Toasty. So stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta love a little heat in the winter time, huh? <laughs> I love a lot of heat in the winter time. <laughs> Alright, where's my fish? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell me I was part of the deal. Yeah. Okay. Alright guys, so I'm here with Matt Graham. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the evolution of shelters. We figured we would start with Matt's pit house. So, tell me a little bit about your pit house. Yeah, so, so this pit house I built uh, in my mid-30s, and I actually lived here for about... You say that like it was a long time ago. It was a long time <laughs> ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm older than I look. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, I lived here for about five years in total, mm -hmm. and um, prior to that, I actually lived in, in quite a few other bark shelters. Mm -hmm. This is actually the fifth pit house I built, and, and they take a couple weeks of pretty solid labor to build. I mean, this is not a quick just slap together yeah, shelter, you survival shelter, or you're just out for the night and you want to throw down something. Just bust garbage. me up a pit house real quick, bro. <laughs> yeah. But once you build one of these, it's it's amazing because you can see it's actually, this one's partially dug into the bank. Mm -hmm. So you get some some uh, heat from the earth. And when you put a blanket on the front door, it's it, toasty. It's amazing. Like the temperatures in this valley have actually dropped down to minus 20. Uh -huh. But with a blanket on that door, it has never frozen here. Got below freezing. Oh, nice. Even without a fire going. Because it's insulating. Because yeah. it's an insulated layer from the earth. And then the construction of it, I mean, you can see you've got, you've got four supporting poles. And this is basically patterned after what the Fremont early hunter gatherer mm -hmm. people built 2,000 years ago when they came to this, this region. Um, so they use this, these four support poles, and then you've got all these other these other beams uh, poles, I guess you you, should, you, you would call it, um, creating the basic framework, the structure. Kind of reminds me of like a Sami people house. Yeah, a little yeah. bit like a little a, la, a lavu. Yeah. 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 Um, and on the outside of that is uh, packed with bark. Mm. And once upon a time, when I first built this, I actually had quite a bit of clay on top of the bark as well. Mm -hmm. So that added a The whole. rain probably removed a lot of it. It yeah. does, yeah. If, you're, if you don't maintain that every year. And I've actually been gone from this location about five years now. So, so this has been sitting for five years like this? Just like this, That's yeah. That's awesome. So, that is awesome. Yeah. So why did, they, why did indigenous people use this shape? Why this conical design? Well, I think... I think the round design is uh, it's it is a little bit easier to heat because you don't have move too yeah yeah and you can you can move around it I, I think there's there's a for me it there's actually a spiritual connection mm -hmm. you know and I look at the earth and it's round and um, it just feels better it feels like not only is the heat of the fire moving around it but it just feels energetic it feels more natural yeah, yeah. But, but they. That's a good. That's a, is a good point because that was great. <laughs> it's cold out awesome, there. Huh? So, um, they 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 have built square ones. You know, yeah. archaeologists archaeologists have found square pit house mm -hmm. designs. So it's not uncommon. The advantage to a square design is that it 
if you have to build it real small, it's a little bit more space space efficient. Mm -hmm. Space efficient. All right, you can make space up words. If, if, if Bush can make up words, you can make up words. <laughs> nice. This is not politics. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> so. Um, so you got that that advantage going for you. Um, but when you you make a larger one, I, the round just feels really good. Like it's just nice. Is, there's something about a round structure and a fire. It just feels inclusive for some reason. I don't know. It's like a natural feeling to me, so I understand that. So that makes sense. Yeah. So one thing that I like about any of these shelters is you can have the open fire, and it just it, it it's almost like a giant Dakota pit. <laughs> yeah, kinda, yeah, kind of like yeah. vacuums from one way and then shoots it right up. That's a good way to put it. And then you once you, once it's going for a long time, you get that reflective heating, mm -hmm. right? And like, and that will kind of cover it in teepees in a little while. But once you've got the heat coming off of here, hitting the walls, radiating down on your back and all around you, it's 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 just like comfort. It's just yeah. it's like it's a amazing. warm blanket after you've been playing in the snow all day long. It just feels right. Yeah. That's so. Totally agreed. And, and when you can have an open fire in a structure, it's really nice because you, you, you get that heat right away. Mm -hmm. Like you instantly oh, start like, the fire. It, it feels great right here. And then like you're I don't want to move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just, you know, it's just bam, you've got it. And this is this is actually a pretty small fire for a structure quite this yeah. big. But um, Well, you can cook on it, you can dry things, you mm -hmm. get that, you, you got your food, your water, the heat, and there's from a survival perspective there's so many things that you get from fire that it's like I, in my opinion one of the most important initial skill sets to gain is how to get your fire because that's how you get your, your water and your food and your heat and your companionship right. drying yourself off and there's just so many things that come from that one element absolutely the other nice thing about like a, a design like this is in the winter time it you know it, it stays a lot warmer than outside mm -hmm. But you also you get the reverse effect in the summertime because yeah. you're, you're buried in the ground. So when it, it gets hot out here, you come in here and it's actually nice and cool. a bit cooler and it's a good place to cook even in the summer. Mm -hmm. Oh, so nice. It's, uh, it we'll have to come back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Test test out that theory. And nice. it, and also just being in the ground when you dug in a little bit, naturally you get more humidity inside here. So we actually, mm -hmm. I, I live in a somewhat arid desert environment mm -hmm. and it's dry which is hard on hunting tools bows things like that i used to have a, a nice rack here which had all my bows and hunting tools mm -hmm. and the humidity was really good on the wood oh nice so it would, it would sustain it longer i know when i brought uh uh a bows and stuff back from the jungle from columbia to dry oh man it destroyed them yep. you know just coming from the high altitude the low desert or the low jungle to the high altitude desert stuff cracked and destroyed i had to immediately uh, dip things in linseed oil just to preserve it from being from being destroyed. Yeah, yeah, so. makes sense. All right, should we go check out the teepees? Yeah, let's let's do it. All right. So this is one that I've been using for about two years, two or three years. I can't exactly remember, and. Uh, I like it because the whole setup with with the ultralight on it is lighter weight than my hammock setup, which just blew my mind. That's nice. So, so, so how, what, what is that? It, this is a, a seek outside, and I need to actually get the weight. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get the weight. That's my bad. Um, it's it. I think the whole setup is under three or four pounds, if okay. I remember correctly. So, I like I like the color. It looks more natural. Yeah, like, my daughter like calls brown. it the mountain tent. She yeah. goes, Dad, it looks like a mountain. So. The, the, the thing about this one is it's dark, so the sun comes through, you get a lot of heat from that, which is good and bad. But if you pop it up real high and just give strings to the base of it, the wind comes through and then it's a shade, which is really nice. Um, I got a half, uh, half floor for this one and a little titanium stove. Now, this titanium stove, um, I don't know how many winter camp outs I've done with it. It'll get 70, 80 degrees in there when it's just rip roaring. And then I have the half floor. The half floor is nice because when you got kids and stuff, you don't want to sleep right on the dirt, especially if you ever go to a public campground and you have to deal with just that flat dirt. It's a real pain. So, so, so tell me about this material that it's made out. So it is a, it's a silicone uh, coated nylon, basically. So that, that coating that it has 
enables it to be water resistant and really, really strong and really lightweight. So it feels just like a parachute. Yeah. <laughs> I grabbed it, I was like, this feels familiar. So, so it's, it's a little bit lighter than my pit house. Yeah, just only a little bit lighter than your pit house, just okay. small, cool. small amount, so yeah. And this, this uh, stove, like, tell me, like this pipe, what's going on with this? So with the stove here, it all packs up in this little flat bag. That big pipe just rolls up, it's a big chunk of square titanium and uh, you just unroll it and then roll it up and it's just just, it's, a it's just as small as the actual stove itself yeah. and then that little stove will pull apart so that little stove pulls apart and you can just throw it in a backpack which is awesome because I, I, I it's so hard to get a stove you can actually go backpacking with yeah so that just that makes me happy like i was so stoked to be able to get a stove i could actually carry in a backpack yeah it's cool that's pretty lightweight it's got its little vent and then you just yeah. Get your, your fire going and you're good to go. So, so yeah, I like this. This is a cool setup. But I, I've got something that if you don't even want to carry a stove, you don't have to. But you could actually put a fire in it. Oh, let's go check it out. Yeah. Feel the heat. <laughs> nice. So yeah, this this is uh, my tent teepee, and, and the nice thing about a shelter like this, you know, it's similar to the conical shelter, but you can have a fire in it. Right in the dead center. Right, right in the center, and it doesn't. And you can set this up in about 15 minutes. It doesn't. It's not like a teepee. It's going to take you a few hours. Oh yeah. I, I, so there's some things that I want to tell you that you just can't know without being here, but. I walked in and I was like, <laughs> like heat wall. It, it was awesome. And it was, the door's even open. Yeah, the, the door's still open. The vent's open on the top, but that that's the point I tried to kind of cover a little bit earlier with the, uh, the pit house. You've got this radiant heat that comes up and it hits these walls and then it comes back down on you and it just reflects all over the place. And that, that tight teepee shape kind of makes it a big Dakota pit, right? So it's sucking the oxygen in and, and, it, and it will force bugs out of the teepee. Mm -hmm. It'll force smoke out of the teepee, all these great things, and reflect that heat back on you. So this is a this is what I would call a semi-permanent shelter mm -hmm. that you can live in permanently. Yeah. My only concern would be after seasons, you'd eventually have mold issues and stuff, but if you dry it out, it shouldn't be a, a problem at all. Yeah, yeah, and the fire too is gonna naturally dry out the inside. So the more more you use it, you know, the more it'll dry out and stuff. And it, and I to me this is a great great option. I mean, I, I I like I like stoves and I think it's cool and you know stoves well designed and mm -hmm. put together. But it's nice just, to have a fire. Just thought, yeah, to be yeah. able to have the fire like. I, I don't know. I'm kind of a romantic sap, you know. I like yeah. to. I lay down at night and I see it licking on the ceiling, you yeah. know, all the firelight, and I, I like to go to sleep that way. And and it's just nice. And then, and once again, it's like it feels more natural. It feels correct. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So you get you get the light and the heat at the same time. But the cool thing about this is you do have an option. There's actually a sleeve that you could put a stove in here if if you wanted. So you do both. You could do both. That's nice. And. Yeah. Um, and it's got these little cords over there which adjust the top cap and you can do it all from the like inside. Open it and close it. And that's good because you can handle the rain. Yeah, and you yeah. can handle the wind situation. So if it's coming in winds from one direction, just like a teepee, you can open up the other oh, side. Nice. Yeah. So that'll help draw the smoke out even that much better. Very nice. And uh, Very cool. Yeah, another thing that's kind of interesting too is it has these little vents down here in the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, on a traditional teepee, you have the ghost liner or the internal liner, and that goes to the ground. The, uh, the outer teepee is up off the ground a few inches, and what that does is it sucks air in that helps vent that smoke up. So that's these guys right here, I was checking on, and that helps that do that as well. So you've got a little bit of the air that can come in, so you're not worried about monoxide mm -hmm. or any type of poisons at night. and mm -hmm. You can have that fire, you know, roaring it, and just the yeah. heat is just incredible. Absolutely, and I and I, I love I love teepees. Actually, I lived in one for about three years, mm -hmm. 
And and I, I have to say, I liked it better the first year because about the second, third year, mice just love to run on the liner. Oh, man. That liner you're talking about, they do laps on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you need to hang out with Larry Roberts. He likes to eat mice. I like to eat mice, too. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's hard to keep up sometimes. That's funny. And uh, so this is a cool option for, I, I think, for people that want something that's much lighter than a teepee much more packable. I mean, this 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 is actually a, a cotton poly mix, mm -hmm. so it, it breathes a lot better than most of the, the nylons, but this company actually does make them where it's uh, more of an ultralight nylon. Yeah, I was looking at his site. That's something that I thought was really interesting. I see a lot of companies that just ultralight or it's just super heavy, but this yeah. company, I thought it was really cool that they have everything from a super ultralight layer or a super ultralight teepee to medium to heavy to super heavy, like Absolutely. industrial strength, 100 pound giant teepees, all the way down to mm -hmm. a couple pound ultralight teepees. So you get a lot of options. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, uh, really well thought out. So yeah, thanks Tyler for coming out here. Thanks and, for inviting and, uh, me, dude. Yeah. It is epic to just get out and do anything anytime. Yeah, I was, I was stoked to film, you know, the pit house and, and see your 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 uh, seek outside. My little teepee there, yeah. Yeah, and, the, and this thing has really been great. I have a lot of fun camping in it. And I it's, want one. And it's, <laughs> to me, it's, yeah, to me, it's like you, you, you know, nowadays people don't necessarily have the time to set up a, a full wiki upper pit house, and this is a great or, option. Uh, a question I get all the time on my channel is where can they go because you can't do it on a lot of public land. And then it just it shuts down a lot of people's but, options. Exactly, yeah. Restrictions are definitely getting tighter and tighter. There used to be more loopholes, I'd say, 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But but nowadays, you know, if you want to have a shelter and have a fire in it, this is a great option. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, fires, I just, I could go on and on. I agree. Something that I, I, I think is really interesting, Nessima talks about this, and he was a writer for Field and Stream. Late 1800s is, is when he, he finished his actual name was George Washington Sears, but his pen name was Nesimic. And he basically talked about don't trap me in a tent. Don't 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 seal me off from nature and and stop me from having a fire. And you look at those old shanty tents that they made, and I, I looked for the longest time trying to find something that it could keep me warm in the winter and that I could have a fire. And to be blunt about it, I don't see any better options than these type of teepees. Mm -hmm. This is just the, the ultimate solution for, I get to have nature, but I get to stay warm. So it's like yeah. comfortable nature. Yeah. This is kind of, kind of the way I like to leave this one. No doubt. And the nice perk about this is if it's a little bit warmer, you open that up all the way. And you it sucks the heat out. And, and you see the stars when you yeah. sleep at night. Very nice. A little bit added romance there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So. Well, yeah, thanks for coming out. and. Uh, and this is this has been awesome. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. So Matt's not gonna say it, but I'll say it for him. Hit the subscribe button <laughs> on his channel. Share his videos. Hit the likes. Go check my channel out, T Jack Survival. I got a lot of cool stuff there. And thank you for watching, Matt Graham. That worked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>